welcome to Ridgemont High School, where tonight the Golden Gophers welcome in the Waynesville Goshen Tigers. Hello, and I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. And Gilly, week 10 of the high school football season, we got a dandy matchup. And look, Ridgemont 7-1 and one overall, 6-1 and one in the Northwest Central Conference. If Upper Side of Valley slips up tonight, these guys could be co-champions of the league. They could be co-champions, but they got to take care of business tonight against Waynesfield. And... You know, like you said, Upper or uh, excuse me, Ridgemont started out against Spencerville with a loss, and they've reeled off some wins. And that upper game was a lot closer than twenty to, to nothing. Yeah. You know, going to the fourth quarter, I think it was six to nothing, and a couple turnovers, you know, late in the game, and it turned into a twenty to nothing loss. But it was a much closer game for the Golden Gophers. Gilly, you look at Waynesville Goshen; they lost, they've lost uh, two games this year. A triple overtime game to Upper Side of Valley, and then a real close win to Hard North. You want to talk about a rushing attack? They got a three-headed monster in Grant Bredigan with 827 yards, Carson Barnes 739 yards, and Gage Steinke with 531. Gilly, that's 2,000 combined yards from the backfield. Well, from the backfield, and you got your quarterback back, apparently correct. It's Jace Kaufman, yeah. You know Kaufman, and then you got Barnes, which you know initially wasn't he the quarterback? This Jace, no, Jace has been the quarterback. Carson's been the tailback the entire okay. year. Okay, you know, yeah. but he's back and he's healthy and like you said they could very easily what they got dinged up there in the middle part of the season and had that loss to overtime to USV and also to Hard Northern or they could be in the you know playing for a championship, you know, so to speak, and being undefeated in the conference. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So, Waynesville Goshen will kick off to Ridgemont as we get ready to get going. And, Gilly, we take a look at Ridgemont, and they run the ball effectively, too. They've got two backs in Mason Howard and Xavier Stuck that are well over 1,000 yards combined. Well, this group that Ridgemont has is, is very sports-minded and dominant in whatever they do. Really it's good a, class. It's yeah. a senior class yeah. that is loaded with uh, with athletes, and uh, you know that that speaks volumes to the numbers they're putting up. Travis Reddick's done a great job. Oh, over he here. has. He's got the culture. He's got everything turned around over here. Ridgemont's got some good years ahead of him. Well, I'll tell first you. opportunity in the playoffs. Absolutely. So Ridgemont's going to take the ball back at the goal line, and they'll try to scurry it up to the midfield, and they'll be taken down at the 10-yard line. So not a, uh, in the best return, Mason Howard returns it to about the 9-yard line. That's where the Gophers will take over. First and 10 from the 9-yard line. They're led on the field by number 12, quarterback Connor Manns, the seniors, 42 of 80, 571 yards, seven touchdowns, and four interceptions. And, Gilly, uh, as I said, both these teams want to Pound the rock. Oh, you know, yeah. They'll just run and run and run. I said, it's going to be a quick one. They're tonight. both it's, physical yeah. teams, and they're, go you know, the battle's going to be determined up front. You know, both teams are just so doggone physical. Steinke was the the gentleman on the tackle for Waynesfield on that opening kickoff. Manz is going to hand the ball off to the first back, and he'll go through to about the 15 yard line. So a nice game there for Jevin Henderson. Uh, takes it through the middle, and uh, it's a nice uh, gain first down. Yeah, he got up ahead of steam there, didn't he? And good job by the line there, giving him a seam and letting him get through it. Ridgemont comes in, Gilly, averaging 23 points a game. Defensively, they give up 11.3 a game. They rush the ball for 210 yards, 63 yards through the air. So their identity is on the ground. Yeah, that's their meat and potatoes, no question. Man's going to hand off to, let's see who that is, Henderson on the left side, gain of about... Excuse me, Mason Howard, gain of about three yards. That's going to bring up third down. So third and four, first big third down play for the Gophers here. Troy Spencer on the stop. Boy, he's a fantastic linebacker, oh. Gilly. He's, I talked to him today a little bit, and he was super excited about this game because they run the ball so much, and he's going to be in a lot oh, of Oh, yeah, tackles. him and Bredigan, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, Bredigan's a great ball player. So here go the Gophers. Mans will go under center. He's got two behind him. He's going to pitch the ball back to Howard. He cuts through the middle, and it's going to be awful close, Gil, if he's doing a first down. Howard powers ahead for a gain of four yards. And... Let's see what they I call. I think they give it to him. That is, that is a first down. That's a Kenton Moose first down. Tonight's first down sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. Nice accolade for Mr. Howard there. Mason Howard we're speaking of. One over 1,000 yards for the season. He's a good back, Gilly. Yes, Mason he is. Howard, 106, before coming into tonight, 162 attempts, 997 yards, 13 touchdowns, Gilly. He knows how to get in the end zone. Well, you know, 
time. Brings back a lot of memories, but I had both mom and dad as did students. You? Yes, I did. <laughs> now you're telling your age. Oh, Gil. yeah. <laughs> if you hear our teeth chattering, we're outside tonight, so uh, it get a little cold up here in the booth. It's, uh, <laughs> you hear my teeth chattering. <laughs> but we're having a great time. But we're having a good time. We yeah. are having a great time. They've been a great host to and us. Kudos here Ridgemont. to Ridgemont. Beautiful love. Oh, the field looks Track great, doesn't it? You know, new concession stand. You look out behind us, the baseball stadium. Yeah, they got it going on here, don't they? Here goes Henderson off the left side. Nice big run. Billy My Jevin goodness. Henderson looking like Earl Campbell running yeah, through the defense. Was State, what, was the, what was the running back he used to play for <laughs> Cleveland, number 40? <laughs> what was his name? He came from Kansas City. Oh, yeah. Uh, not, not Christian Nicoya. Nope. <laughs> big dude. War number 40. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm at a loss. We're getting old. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was back when they were winning, too. That's right. Connor Manns will go under center. He's got two backs behind him. He's got a receiver off to the left side. He's going to hand up to the first man, and he'll go through the middle. And you see that Ridgemont offensive line starting to ground out the yards. And uh, that is their identity. Mason Howard, a gain of five. Yeah, the fellas up front right now are controlling the line of scrimmage. They sure are. For this the green and gold. This, this drive started at the nine-yard line, and they've pushed it already out to the 35-yard line. Every play has been a run play. Howard will go, or excuse me, Manns will go under center. He's going to hand the ball off. This is Henderson again. Henderson gets big yardage. And Jevin Henderson is really, really stretching those legs out. He goes to the 45 for another Lee's famous recipe for, excuse me, a Kenton Moose first down. First down. Yeah, big run right there. Kick out block, got him turned the corner, got them shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage, just plowed his way for another go for first down. Mans will go under center. He's going to hand off to Howard. Howard stuffed up the middle and a nice job there. Oh, guess who? Troy Spencer Troy just Spencer laid Spencer him wood. in the hole, didn't he? Yes, he did. Give him one. When you're Troy Spencer and you're Grant Bredigan, there's two physical linebackers. This is what you want. You want a crisp fall night where they never throw the football and they get in on every tackle. Yep. You can sit there and lick your chops and, you know, step up in them gaps because you know the ball's coming towards you. So that'll bring up second and nine from the 45. Mans will go under center. He's got, he's got Howard and Henderson in the backfield. He's going to hand off to... How, uh, oh, nice play. Howard taken down and a big time play there. That's Bredigan, my boy. Grant Bredigan. Well, you put Ridgemont in those third and long. That's exactly what Waynesville wants That's to do. Yeah. The, uh, Ridgemont doesn't throw the ball a lot. So, you know, this is a perfect setup for the Tigers right now. They've got him at third and nine. Let's see what the Gophers do here. They'll send one receiver to the left. He's out in single coverage. Mans is going to go under center. He'll have Howard and Henderson in the backfield with him. He's going to keep it himself. He's looking to throw the ball. He throws to the left side. He's got a man out there. Oh, he overshoots the intended target, number two, Mason Howard and Gilly. He was wide open. He was wide open. You know, I really like the, you know, the ball fake right there and the setup. You know, like you said, just a little bit overthrown. But, boy, you're right. He was open. If he'd have got that, I think he'd have probably found his way to the uh, – yeah, I think he had plenty Bowling. of grass in front of him. No question. Ridgemont will go back, and they will punt the ball. I guess it's Colton Bailey, I believe. And Waynesville will send one back to the 20, and a near block, and a nice, nice punt. Boot. Nice, big-time punt. It's just going to roll back across the 10-yard line. It's going to go to the 7-yard line, Gilly. What a great punt by that young man. Sure was. And that's where Waynesfield will take over. They will be led on the field by number zero, quarterback Jace Kaufman, a 5'8", 150-pound senior. He's 25 of 42 for 662 yards, 10 touchdowns, and three interceptions. And as I said earlier, Gilly, they got a three-headed monster behind them, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to run the ball. They'll very rarely throw the ball. Well, we haven't had Ridgemont. We've had Waynesfield. We know how physical they can very be. Very physical. But you know what? For Ridgemont to go up to Hard Northern, Wow. You get that W get up there. Win. That was a big you know, win. That was a physical contest. Yeah. It was physical against USV. I just think it's going to come down to hat on hat tonight. So Coffin will go under center. He's going to pitch the ball back. This is Bredigan trying to get outside, and he is going to be hit hard, taken down. And that's a loss of a yard, Gilly. Well, that all started with Mr. Howard, his ability to 
to keep him from going outside and turning back in. And that was Carson Barnes. And and if we if we mispronounce the numbers or the names, we're we're it's at a very far vantage point uh, from the field. So uh, we're we're doing the best we can to get. And they got those white numbers with the yellow numerals. Yes. So not easy. So and you and I are both ancient. Uh, yeah, we both have glasses, <laughs> and I've just had mine updated and probably going to need it again. There goes a handoff on the right side, and that was yeah, Grant Bredigan. Bredigan, yeah. yeah. Boy, and we saw Grant Bredigan. We mm. saw him against Hard Northern. If he gets a crease, he's gone. He, he's electric. You know when the PA address is having a problem <laughs> right. identifying who's running the football, too. <laughs> That'll bring up third and nine from the nine-yard line. So Waynesfield, excuse me, third and 11 is what they're calling it. Third and nine on the board, but the PA announcer says third and 11, so 5.52 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Ridgemont High School on a big-time NWCC matchup here between the Tigers and the Gophers. Coffin's going to hand the ball off, tries to get around the side. They'll go to the 12. Oh, I think they got a hold. Flag comes in, and you're going to get a hold, and that was number 22, it looks like, Caden Ridgeway. Caden Ridgeway on the 20, they say. Okay, Stanky. Stanky. <laughs> the, the, the PA announcer is having as much trouble as we are as he got the wrong call there. But we'll see what this flag is. Well, the official was on top of it because they saw the hold. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Kaiser and, and stuck on the stop for the Gophers. Waynesville's going to have to punt the ball, and they're going to be punting Gillow oh. from their end zone. So this is dangerous territory here for the Tigers. Well, it all started with the punt. Oh, my goodness, it did. And, and, and a great job by the Gophers' defense of really manning up. They'll send number 25 back, John Cromer. You know, there's a lot of computer points at stake tonight. Absolutely. You know, I mean, everybody's going to know Sunday on who and where they will play that opening round. Top four has the opportunity to host two games. Top eight gets one. So Waynesville with some major substitutions there and the officials say, hey, let's play ball. So they'll punt the ball from the end zone and a good snap. And Oh, near block there. I think the, that was I, Bailey. Yeah, and it was to the 32-yard line, and that's where it'll be down. Ridgemont's in great field position, Gilly. And you're right. It started with Ridgemont's punt. Their defense held tough, and here they are on the 32-yard yeah, line. Yeah, change of possession. How many how, how, you know, how many yards did Ridgemont right there gain just right. off of that the two-punt situation? And, Gilly, we talk about it all the time. That Jim Tressel used to preach that the punt is as important a play as there is in football. Special and there teams. you see. Yeah, there you see a, a perfect example of why Ridgemont punts the ball, turns the field over, and now sitting pretty on the 32. So that'll bring up first and 10. Howard will go under center. He's got Henderson and Howard under him, and he'll hand off to Mason Howard. He tries to go around the right side, and he is met by a host of Tigers, and Mason Howard will be thrown down. Good job by that young man getting away from Bredigan. I wouldn't be surprised, Gilly, to watch young Mr. Connor Manns one of these times, the old bootleg, because they're running everything to one side. Watch him go to the left side. Let's see what they do here. Sure. That'll bring up second and 10 from the 30. Jace Turner from that end position for the Tigers of Waynesfield on the stop. 4.58 to go here in the first quarter. All knotted at zero on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. They'll hand off to Henderson up the middle, and Henderson gets big-time yardage. A nice six-yard run there. Javen Henderson doing it all right now for the Gophers, and he, he's really going through that line, Gilly. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. <laughs> I knew we were going to hear the rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Tell, well, he did right there. <laughs> Absolutely. He almost bounced his way off in, in, into pay dirt. So Connor Manns calls him to the line. He's got Mason Howard directly behind him. He's going to pitch back to Howard, and Howard is hit immediately by that Tiger front line. My goodness, they're all over the place there. There you see big number 54, Brody Roberts sure on the tackle. Was. Nice job by that young Spencer man. Spencer also in on the stop. Grant Bredigan there to help clean it up. That'll bring up fourth and three, or excuse me, their third down. Fourth, fourth down. They had the uh, chains a little mixed up there. Fourth and three from the 30. I like the call here going for it, Gilly. Well, short field. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they give the signal for the clock to start, and we'll go fourth and three from the 30. Connor Manns will call him to the line. He's got Howard and Henderson behind him. 
He's going to keep it himself. He rolls to the left. He's under heavy pressure. He throws the ball. He's got a man out and dropped oh, it. Mason Howard dropped the ball. Had him all open, Gilly, and he just dropped it. Yep, off the fingertips. Great execution right there. Nice pass. Unfortunately, Mason just couldn't reel that one in. Two big-time pass plays for the Gophers that were wide open, and they did not execute. So Waynesville Goshen will take over first and 10 from the 30 with 4.01 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Ridgemont High School on a, on a somewhat chilly night, but not too bad. Gilly, look at this field. It is in super condition. They've done a great job with this facility down here they at Ridgemont. Have. I mean, it is just pristine. Kudos to the Ridgemont Athletic Department and the Ridgemont community. They've done a great job of really changing the culture down here, and uh, what, a, what a great place to be tonight. So here comes Jace Goffman. He'll bring him to the line. He's going to give the first man up, and that is Carson Barnes. I think that was Henderson. Okay. Patrick Stacklin on the tackle. They call him P-Stack down here, Gilly. I don't know if we know him well enough to call him uh, peace, Dad. Yeah, we better, we yeah. better not do that. <laughs> oh, Gilly. No, we're not in that group. No, we're not. <laughs> was a nice tackle, though. It was. They'll go second and nine from the 25. Coffin will call him to the line. He's going to hand the ball off. They'll go off the right side, and stout defense by the Ridgemont Gophers. Gilly, this is a street fight right now. Both offensive and defensive lines are just battling it out, and Carson Barnes going nowhere on that carry. Yeah, Stacklin on the stop, along with Henderson, Bailey. Gilly, you like the old-fashioned rock em, sock em, run the ball down the throat kind of games? You like that, don't you? I, I, I do. I like that gopher uniform I do. and those helmets. I do. That, they look good out there, don't they? So Kaufman will call him to the line. Those dark helmets. He's going to throw the ball. He's going up the left side. He's got oh, a man out and there, I, and he's going to throw it clear out of bounds. And a little contact out there. Intended target was Grant Bredigan. Uh, but that goes nowhere, and it'll bring up fourth down for the Tigers. Yeah, John Cromer on the defensive position right there. Good job running stride for stride with. Yeah, and, what, <laughs> and it was kind of funny. Once Cromer got him out of bounds, he just kind of grabbed him and threw him down because he knew there would be no penalty right. because he was out of bounds and he couldn't come back in for the ball. Yeah, that so ball, a smart that play ball by means him. nothing. Yeah, so Carson Barnes will go back in punt formation, and he'll punt from the 15-yard line. Gophers have two deep at the 45-yard line. Barnes gets a low punt, and it goes just down the right side. It'll go out of bounds right at midfield to the 50-yard line. That's where the Gophers will take over with 2.41 to go. Gilly Wainsville comes into this game averaging 33 points a game. Defensively, they give up 14.8 a game. They rush 275 yards a game and through the air 73 yards a game. Their only losses were to Harden Northern and to, as I said before, that triple overtime loss to Upper Side of Alley. Uh, since that Harden Northern loss, Gilly, they've come back and won uh, f six in a row, or five in a row, excuse me. Yeah, they fought themselves from being right on the teeter of the playoffs to basically securing, securing yeah, a spot. Securing a big time. So Connor Manns will bring him to the line. We'll go first and 10 from the 50. He's got Howard and Henderson behind him. And they'll flip it back to Mason Howard as he goes across the 50. Cuts back to the middle. He's at the 45. He's at the 40. Nice run. Nice run there by Mason Howard. And he picks up a good eight yards to bring up second and two. Mason Howard on the season. Nine over 1,000 yards for the young man. Good. Boy, he's, he's like a bowling ball, Gilly. He just gets through that he's line. He's yeah. Well, his dad was a strong young man in <laughs> high school, too. Built just like his father. And Pam was really wiry. The mother was a really good athlete, too. So he comes from an athletic background family. Second two from the 43. Mans will go under center. He's going to hand off to Henderson. And Henderson, he gets the first down. <laughs> Jevin Henderson. I like to call him Earl Campbell. He's rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. This is thunder and lightning, Gilly. You got the young man, the the mm. young quick one in Mason Howard, and the and the big bull and and, uh, and the thumper in Henderson, yeah. And we haven't even seen Xavier stuck to carry yet. Oof. Zeckman on the stop for Waynesfield. That'll bring up third. Now they're going to call it third and one. No first down there, and they'll get the first down there as Henderson is big time on the right side. And he picks up another Kenton Moose first down. Jevin Henderson 
just accumulating yards no, and he's chunks. Getting, he's getting chunks, but, yeah, his linemen are doing a really good job and his receivers are doing a really good job, you know, holding their own at the line of scrimmage and making great blocks to spring him free. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 40. Manzel bring him to the line. He'll hand to Henderson. He goes off the right side. And again, Henderson, you know, here's the one thing about Henderson, Gilly. He doesn't take a loss. Everything goes forward. I mean, he's getting four or five and six yards a chunk. Yeah, and he's right getting now, a great push. Yeah, right now he's the best player on the field. Jace Kaufman on the stop for the Tigers. So Waynesfield's kind of on their heels right now as the Gophers are driving it down the field. We're just under 40 seconds here in the first quarter, all knotted at zero. Connor Manns will bring in the line, second and six from the 27-yard line. They'll put two men in motion. That's number 10, Xavier Stuck. Here goes Mason Howard off the left side. He's got a seam. He goes across. He gets up to the 20, and he'll take it to the 10-yard line. Mason Howard with a big-time run and another Kenton Moose first down, and the Gophers are in the Thermal Guard window and door red zone. Quality windows and doors from a local company you can trust. Visit thermalguardwindows.com or call 419-229-4273 for your free estimates. So there you see the speed of one young Mr. Mason Howard as he rumbles up the sidelines for a big-time game. Well, they shifted those two guys to that left side and ran right behind Stuck and Henderson. A nice job there by the Gopher defensive line and I'm trying to make out who that is with the tackle. Jevin Henderson, Jevin Henderson got upended and I think like it's number 56. 56. Yeah, Layden Porter with a big time tackle. Sure was. Yeah, and that'll do it after one quarter of play. It's zero to zero from Ridgemont High School. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert, you're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Ridgemont High School, where we're just getting ready to start the second quarter, and the Gophers are on the drive there at the 10-yard line. They'll go first and 10 from the 10. Connor Manns will call him to the line. He's got Mason Howard in the backfield behind him. And the fumble, the ball's on the ground. It's fumbled, and Waynesfield oh, recovers. Boy, I think they did, And yep. there is a fumble on the field, and it looks like Waynesfield will take it. A huge mistake by the Gophers, Gill and the Tigers hold them at the 10-yard line. Yeah, I think that one was intended to. I think it was going back to Xavier Stuck. I think it was it? going yeah. to Xavier Stuck on the little sweep action there. Boy, I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with Ridgemont's play calling tonight. They've got some, they, they just dial it up and they do some coach great Reddick's stuff. Coach Reddick's a good young coach. Oh my, that whole staff's a good coaching staff, so. You know, a lot of them guys he brought with him were his previous yeah. coaching. Stint. And so here go the Tigers, first and 10 from the 10. Kaufman will come to the line. Carson Barnes behind him. He'll hand the Barnes on the left side, and nothing going on. And maybe, maybe half a yard if that. Got a flag on the play. Flag on the play. Mason Howard, I can't see who else was in there. Let's see who else, or excuse me, let's see what the play is called here. No gain on the play, second down. Come from that left side, I wonder if it's a hold. Sideline okay. warning, sideline warning against Waynesfield Goshen. So not real sure. Coach Chris Summers is upset at the official. You can see him over there on the sidelines. And he is really, really upset, Gilly. Second and ten. Well, the good thing about that, it, you know, there's no yardage put on something sure, like that. First sure. one's a warning. Yeah. Chris Summers, a good coach and a good guy. It's had his you know, stints too. He has, he sure has. Second and 10 from the 10. Coffin will bring him to the line. He'll hand the ball off. They'll go to the left side, and they find a hole. They get up to the 20, and they're going to be at first down. Another Kenton Moose first down, and a nice carry there. And that's the best play of the night for the Tigers. And a flag on the play. That's a big run right there. Let's see if that's going to be nullified. Uh, you want to believe that uh, in that area. And then we've got, looks like... Uh, I thought we had an injury. The uh, trainer went out, but uh, she's coming back. So Okay, uh, there's no flag on the Okay, no flag. All right. Gilly, you thought you saw a flag? or? Uh, actually, I thought it was a PA address mm -hmm. announcer. That'll be first and ten. No flag on the play. First down, Tigers. So Waynesfield on the march here, tied up at zero. Coffin will bring him to the line. 
He'll hand the ball off the left side, and not much happening there. Boy, these defensive lines are playing Oof. fantastic tonight, are they not? My goodness, just nothing to think of here when these backs get through that that front line of the of the defense, and there's just nothing there. Yeah, I'm trying to say, I can't even see who it was. It happens to dog going quick, and he was up and ready for the next play. And that's what Waynesville does. They rush to the line real quick, and Kaufman calls it quick. And they'll, you know, they got Carson Barnes and Gage Steinecke back there. Kaufman's going to throw, and he's got a man out there, and he just overshoots him, his intended target. Boy, and he took Number a wicked 16. lick there from yes, Mason Howard. Carson Barnes was the intended target. And you're right, Jace Kaufman was hit hard on the play. And uh, he's getting his bearings together, but you can see he was he was hit hard. Yeah, that was a good stick with his shoulder pad right into the rib area. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catered needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So the Tigers get to the line quick. They'll hand the ball off the right side, and he finds a crease, and he gets across to about the 33-yard line. That's Grant Bredigan. And we've seen him a lot this year. He's had a fantastic season, over 800 yards, 11 touchdowns, and he's part of that big-time three-headed monster for the Tigers. And now Gilly fourth and two from the 25. No momentum really for either team. Let's see what the Tigers decide. They're going to go for it here, Gilly, on yeah, the 30. Let's see if they don't cadence call it to On to the 33, with. yeah, on the 33-yard line. You're right. Let's just see if they, they, they call it or what they, what they decide. Oh, they're going to go. And they'll hand the ball off. This is Steineke. He tries to get around the left side. He cuts it back. Oh, and they are going to it. turn the ball over. The Gophers get the ball back. And they are in prime real estate, Gilly. A big time stop by the Ridgemont defensive line. Trying to see who that was. It appeared to be John Cromer. So that'll bring up first and 10 from the 33. Well, you want to talk about defensive struggle right now, Gilly. It is absolutely. I mean, here we are 24 minutes into this game, and <laughs> it's just flying along. Well, it, you know, it's going to turn into... You know, uh, uh, just an absolute war in the trenches and second level and also in that third level. Mans is going to throw. He's going to throw to the left side. He's got a man out there, and it is. Oh, did he, he did catch it? it? Nope. It oh, bounced. my goodness. I, <laughs> there was a, a, a fight for the ball. His intended target was, I believe, number 21, I think Colton, Colton Mans. Mans. Yeah. And it looked like the ball got bobbled up, Billy. Gilly. I thought he caught it when he came back down to the ground. Yeah, they two went up for it like a rebound, and the ball was deflected by Waynesfield defender. Trying to see who that is. Appears to be number 11. Boy, I'll tell Reed you what, Wakeman, Gilly. he's hobbling off. Richmond is not shy about taking their shots, are they not? <laughs> they'll come nope. at you. They'll run, 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 mm -hmm. run, and then they'll throw one 40 yards down the field. I love the offensive scheme by yeah, the Gophers. Yeah, he's, he's mixing it up. Absolutely. So uh, here they go, second and 10. And Connor Manns is in the gun. He's going to throw the right side, and he's got a man out there. Completion made and thrown out of bounds, and a nice job there by the young gunslinger, Connor Manns. Is that Cromer? John Cromer with the catch. Nice route by that young man. Got him eight. And Ridgemont back-to-back -back throws here, Gilly. <laughs> got me a... Got me on my heels, too. Well, they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Sure you know, and I mentioned that before, but they're also controlling the clock and the tempo of the game. And there's a, I believe there's an issue with the clock. They say to put 9.13 on the clock, and they're selling the, the uh, PA to put 9.26 back on the clock, and that's exactly what they do. So we'll go third and two from the 33 with 9.26 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert, Jacob O'Neill from Ridgemont High School on a fall crisp Friday football night. NWCC action here. They'll go on the left side. This is Mason Howard, and he gets through. The little bowling ball gets to the 20, and the run game is on full exhibition right now for the Gophers. Really good patience by that senior. Letting his lineman get established, yeah. let him get hat on hat. That's a that's a great call, Gilly. He is watching his lineman, and uh, as you know, backs like Le'Veon Bell taught us that if you wait for those blocks to be made, they'll get there, and that's exactly what the Ridgemont offensive line is doing. So Connor Manns will call him to the line. Ooh. He's in the gun. He's Open got trips up. to the right. Yes, 
Manns looks across the field. He's under pressure, and he is going to be taken down. And a big-time sack there by Grant yes. Bredigan yep, sure pushes was. him back to the 30. Boy, Grant Bredigan is everywhere, mm. Gilly. <laughs> he is everywhere. He's so doggone quick. <laughs> you know, Gilly, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the street fight that was Waynesville, Goshen, and Hard Northern, and we got a dandy oh, right yeah. here. You want to talk about a mirror of each other. These two schools, they just mirror each other. Yeah, it's a really good league this year. It, it really is. I mean, what are they going to get, three, oh, Gilly, they, four? They could, get, they could get as many as six in. Wow. Yeah. So when you come to Ridgemont, you better be ready for the trains, Gilly. You can hear him in the background. <laughs> so Connor Manns will go in the gun. He's got one to the right, one to the left, and you're going to get a uh, false start. False start, I believe, on the line of scrimmage there by the Gophers. And let's see what they call. Yep, that's exactly false what it is. That'll back him up five yards. Gilly, a slew of great games tonight, including oh. that Northwest Conference showdown between Bluffton and Columbus Grove, the Max showdown between Marion oh, Local and Coldwater, and just some great high school action. And we've had, look, we've had great weather all year. And when we say it's cold, it's not that bad up here. No. <laughs> no, cold is when you get to that regional final <laughs> level. There's a level, excuse me. See, I'm not even cold right now and having a problem to speak. We have a, to set out the snow. That's right. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout on the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back here at Ridgemont High School with 8.03 to go until halftime. Still not at a zero. And the Gophers are on the drive as they'll go second and 21 from the 30-yard from the line. Forward pass across oh, the line nice of scrimmage to right the 20 there. yard line. The intended target was for number 10, Xavier Stuck. Connor Manns, nice pass there, but it just it did not connect. Well, Jace Coffin did a really good job running stride for stride with the receiver and batted the football away. So that'll bring up third and 21. They've got it on the scoreboard that they're on the 29-yard line, Gil, but I've got them on the 35-yard <laughs> line. Well, the sack and then the Here goes Manns. He'll follow the start. left side. He's got his man out there, and the connection is made to Keith Colton Manns, and that'll bring up fourth, and he, I don't want to say manageable, but a lot better position than they were in now. Uh, from the about the 26-yard line, they're obviously going to go for it here, Gil. Ty Wireman on the stop. That'll bring up fourth and 13. Yeah, Waynesfield's bending. They're not breaking defensively. You know, Ridgemont's had it in the short field, what, twice? Yeah, twice. Connor Manns will go to the gun. He's got trips to the right, and Waynesfield is going to take a – no, Ridgemont's going to take a timeout. So. No, it's actually Waynesfield. Yeah, okay, they changed it. Waynesfield takes the timeout. We'll take a time out here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back here at Richmond High School with 721 to go until halftime. Our first down sponsor tonight is the Kenton Moose. Kenton Moose in Hardin County, home for great food, fellowship, and friends. Here go the Gophers. And Manns is in the gun. He's under heavy pressure. He's rolling to his right, and he's going to be taken down for a big-time sack across the 40 to about the 43-yard line, Gilly. And that's the one thing Ridgemont wanted to not do, and they gave up almost 15 yards in the progress. Yeah, Layden, or the process, Port, Layden, Layden Porter right there with tremendous pressure. They just they, 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 the offensive line did not give. And a great job by the, the Waynesfield defense. They're doing a tremendous to, job, to, yeah. To throw the football partner. And, yeah, Waynesfield, like I said, they're bending. They're not breaking. And there, you, 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 Gilly, you get the feeling that this is going to be a who can you know who can put something in the end zone to put the pressure on the other team because we're not going to see a lot of points tonight. They'll be at a premium. These defenses are really good. Yeah, if you get a touchdown, you're going to earn it, right? Absolutely. So Kaufman will bring him up to the line. They'll go first and ten from the 39. They'll hand off, go off the right side. And that Ridgemont defensive front just smothers the ball carrier. And that was, I believe that was number 10, Brady Miller on the carry. 
Brady was taken down for, uh, it looks like a loss of two, Gil. Well, that was number 40. Mr. Henderson. Mm. <laughs> He's everywhere. A.K.A. Mike Allstott. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a quarter and a half to remember that. He is a heck of a ball player. I'm telling you, man, that yeah. kid just fills the holes. He's physical. Coffin's got his man out there in a nice strike. Oh, oh nice tackle. To the 35. And a gain of about three yards. But he finds his intended target. That's number 11, Reed Waitman, on the catch. Uh, here's, here's one thing I like about both these defenses. On, on, a, on a pass play and or a, a, a running play that gets through the line, they are Johnny on the spot when it comes to tackling. They are really good in open field, both these squads. Well, are. and gang tackling, too. Yeah, absolutely. If there's one there, there's going to be three or four that's soon going to follow. Third and five from the 44. Kaufman will hand the ball off. No, he's going to keep it himself. He's under pressure. He throws back to the left. He's got his man out there, and a flag comes in, and he'll go across the middle. And, Gilly, i got to believe that one's coming back. Because that was back behind the backfield, and we'll see what they call here. And a nice big play there by the Tigers, but is it going to stand up? We'll see what they call it. They're going to call it against Waynesville Goshen in a hold that wipes out a huge play, Gilly. Yeah, I'm trying to see where it came from, you know. Uh, boy, it was well set up. It had to be right there off the initial uh, after the snap because yeah, they had right. all of Ridgemont shifted to this side of the field, and they had a lot of running room over there. Unfortunately, the thing's going to be nullified and going to be brought back, and it's going to be third down and long, like 15. Third and 15 from the 44. Kaufman's going to hand the ball off. They'll go around the right side, and a pickup of maybe, maybe three yards. And a great job there by... Good job by Mason Howard right there shedding the block. Making the stop for the Golden Gophers. Clock continues to run at 5.39 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Ridgemont High School. On a great football Friday night. Week 10 of the high school football. Gilly, the playoffs start next week. Playoffs. How excited are you? First time ever for Ridgemont. That's right. The Golden Gophers excited. The Tigers are in. Everybody's happy at both of these schools. Waynesville will go back in punt formation and a high punt across the 40. Be caught at the 35-36 at the yard line, and that's where the Gophers will take over. So with 5-10 to go, we're all knotted at zero. Really, you take a look at uh, Ridgemont here. They lose to Spencerville in week one, 29-19, and then they don't lose again until – and they were, in that, they were in that game. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, they yeah. were ahead, I think, in like 19 to 18 or something, 19 17. What, they, and and you, Spencerville scored late. Yeah, and you look at some of the wins. They've got some great wins. They beat Elgin 28 0. They beat Harden Northern 14 to 7. Those were big wins in this conference. Right. And they got it done at the defensive end. You yes. know what I'm saying? Mans will go under center. He'll pitch back to Howard. Howard gets through in a gain of about three yards, take it up to about the 39 yard line. We'll go second and eight from the 38-yard line. Again. So no secret to this game tonight. Both these teams are going to run it, run it, run it right at you. And it has been a slugfest here with 440 to go until halftime. We're all knotted at zero. Yeah, you better make sure, partner, you got your chin strap tightened up and your <laughs> mouthpiece in. Mans will go under center. He's got Howard and Henderson behind him. Xavier Stuck goes in motion. He'll hand off to Henderson. Henderson goes off the right side looking for his blockers, and he gets through a hole, and he picks up about seven yards close to a first down. Let's see where they mark it, Gilly. But there's Jevin Henderson again. My goodness, he's something else to take down, isn't he? You know, and if you ever watch him carry the football, it's not in one hand. No, no. Watch him. I mean, he's got it protected with both hands, and they're not going to take it out of his hands. He's, he's been the bell cow tonight for the Gophers. He's got the tough yards for him, and that'll bring up third and one. And officials have stopped play for some reason. They're coming together at the football. Not real sure what this was about. Gilly got a great chance uh, this week to be the keynote speaker at the uh, Northwest Ohio Football Officials Association Bank. But it was fantastic. They treated me great, and a lot of good guys out there. Oh, there are, you know. Yeah. Uh, officiating's a thankless job. Oh, that's what I told him. <laughs> I told him that. 
And I said I appreciated everything they did. They fed me well, too, Gilly. Did I was they? the old barn out back. Yeah. Okay. That's some good fried chicken, I'll be honest with you. Mr. Pete Williams? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they took care of me. Here go the Gophers. They'll hand off to Henderson right at the middle, and he gets it. He gets a big-time Kenton Moose first down. Yeah. And where they spot the ball out there is another Kenton Moose first down. They just couldn't bring him down. It was two and three yellow hats with him, and he just bulldozed his way and past that yard mark and got that first down for the Gophers. And you got to believe with 3.56 to go, Ridgemont thinking about, you know, taking their time and not letting Waynesfield Goshen get the ball back here. But oh, that all starts with the running the football, you know? Absolutely. Connor Manns goes under center. He's got Mason Howard completely behind him. They'll hand to Howard. And he'll go up the middle. He lose the ball. Yeah, uh, no, I don't. Believe. Oh no. Okay. They, 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 it was a it was a fake handoff to Howard and uh, okay. Connor Hans kept it himself, but uh, takes a loss there. Great job by the Waynesfield interior defensive line. Boy, those guys are having a night too. I know we've talked a lot about Ridgemont, but my goodness, Waynesfield's playing good on the defensive line. Kaiser coming out appears to be a little dinged up. Number three. That'll bring up second and 10 from the 46. Three minutes to go here until halftime. Go for a little wrinkle in there that time, they didn't did. he? They sure did. So Manns will go under center. He's got Henderson and Howard behind him. He's going to keep it himself. He's under pressure, and he is scrambling onto the right side, throws down the field, and he's got his man out there. A connection made at the 39-yard line, and a nice strike there to number 25, John Cromer. We've called him quite a few times tonight, Gilly. Yes, Cromer on the catch, sure-handed Cromer. Well, boy, what a great escape there by oh, the quarterback. Oh, he was dead to right, was he not? Yeah, they had him, and his strength got him away from the defender. I, th I think the pressure came from Jace Turner, maybe. It's difficult to see the numbers of Waynesfield. <laughs> it's really hard to see the numbers. So Manz will bring him up to the line, first and 10 from the 39. Another Lee's famous recipe for, excuse me, Kenton Moose first down. And there goes Henderson, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Picks up about eight yards. Jace Kaufman on the tackle. I think if he doesn't get him, that's a touchdown. That might be a touchdown saving tackle right there for the Tigers. I'm like you, I think they're gonna use every second they can here. I think you're right. And we are under 159 to go here until halftime. We'll go second and two from the 39. Gophers on the drive. Mans goes under center. He's got Henderson and Howard behind him. Xavier Stuck will go in motion. They'll hand to Howard off the left side. He finds a hole. He gets across the 30 to about the 25 yard line. Mason Howard, and here go the Gophers. And you gotta believe they're gonna use a timeout here soon, Gilly. Bring him on the stop, along with Brady Miller. Nice run there by Howard. And the clock continues to run. First and 10 from the 31. Ridgemont taking their time. They feel confident in this drive. Mans will go under center. He's got Howard and Henderson behind him. Oh, he's going to keep it himself. He's under heavy pressure. He gets across the 25, cuts back to the 20, and Mason Howard, excuse me, Connor Manns with a nice carry there. And a timeout. Ridgemont will take a timeout. With 1.17 to go, we'll step aside. You're watching High School Football, WOSC. Back here at Richmond High School with 1.17 to go. We're getting down to crunch time until halftime. Still not at a zero, but the Gophers with their best drive of the night, Gilly. And, and look, it's, it's nothing secretive what they're doing. They're just driving the ball. They had a nice pitch and catch earlier in the drive uh, from, from uh, Mans to Cromer, a really nice play. But most of these have been Mason Howard and Jevin Henderson. Yep. Yeah, and they're going to continue. They got the one timeout left. I'm sure they're going to try to save it. And they'll go Jevin Henderson off the right side. He cuts back, and he takes it to about the 17-yard line. They'll go hurry up there, third and one from the 20. And Mans is going to throw. He's got a man out there, and the reception's made. He'll go to the five-yard line. Reception made Manns. by Colton Mans. And here go the Gophers with 54 seconds to go at the five-yard line. They're in the thermal guard and window and door red zone. 
Wireman and Kaufman on the stop. Here go the Gophers. Mans will bring him to the line. He'll hand the ball to Mason Howard. Mason Howard takes it up the middle. He's fighting for every yard he's got. He gets to the goal line. He's close. And they're going to say he's down. They're going to say he's down at the goal line with 37 seconds to go. And the Gophers take a quick timeout, Gilly. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. The Gophers trying to punch it in from the one-yard line. So everything here on the line in this key NWCC matchup. With 37 seconds to go, Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Ridgemont High School. They'll go second and goal from the 37 yard line. If you have a pulse, if you have a heartbeat, I need you on your feet. I need you cheering, screaming, yelling, going crazy. We gotta push these gophers into this end zone. So that PA announcer down here at <laughs> Richmond getting a little excited for his Golden Gophers. I don't blame him. They got the ball on the goal line. And Waynesville Goshen's going to have to tighten up here as Richmond tries to put one on the board. They'll go second and goal from the goal line. Mans will go under center. He's got Henderson and Howard directly behind him. He's got Colt Mans to the left. He's going to keep it himself. And does he get in? There's, yes, and a Ridgemont touchdown. The Golden Gophers strike first as they score from one yard out. Connor Manns takes it in, and the Gophers lead 6 0 on the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. 11 green uniforms <laughs> pushing right. and pushing and pushing. That's right. So the Ridgemont Golden Gophers, with 32 seconds to go, take the first half lead. And they are just going crazy here. <laughs> well, what's so impressive is the time management that Ridgemont is showing, oh, you know, yeah, incredible. especially on that drive right there. Yeah. And Colton Manns will try for the extra point. Kick is up, and it is no good. It is blocked to the line of scrimmage. So that makes it 6 to nothing. So with 32 seconds to go, the Ridgemont Golden Gophers have taken the first lead of the night as they lead the Tigers 6 to nothing. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Back here at Richmond High School with 32 seconds until halftime. The Golden Gophers have taken a 6-0 lead on a one-yard plunge by quarterback Connor Manns and Gilly. They just ran it, ran it, ran it right down the field. And you're right. They took over that ball with about five minutes to go and didn't give it up. And chewed nice up, job, chewed up yards and chewed up the clock both. You know, that's a very good recipe for success, and that's exactly what happened. And they got it across the goal line. They're not going to give Waynesfield much of an opportunity so Waynesfield needs a nice return here with 32 seconds to go to give themselves a chance to get on the board until halftime here. And a short kick fielded at about the 20-yard line. They'll go to the 25 to the 30. They cut back, and they get to the 40. He's going to go to the right side. He goes out. He gets to the 45 and right at midfield. And Grant Bredigan with a great job of getting Waynesfield in. With a, with a good chance, Gilly, with 21 seconds to go. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not so sure taking him out of bounds and stopping the clock, you know. I'm, or does, right. No, 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 right, right. Does the clock stop, though? I mean, if, if he's chain, tackling yeah, bounds. Yeah, I was going to say, okay. it, it, they, they get it set up, but okay. uh, still. Hey, he takes it. Nice, it, nice yeah. return right there. It'll be first and 10 from the 48, so. Yeah, a couple timeouts left. Yeah, I'm sure Chris Summers is going to be, uh, you know, trying to get some points here with 21 seconds to go. I don't think he's just going to take a knee. Jace Kaufman will bring him up to the line of scrimmage with 21 seconds to go. We'll go first and 10 from the 48. Kaufman's got Carson Barnes right behind him. Grant Bredigan off to his left. And Jace is going to keep it himself. He's going to roll. And he throws downfield. He's got a man out there. And the completion is made. It's made at the 24-yard line. A big-time pitch and catch. And the Tigers are on their way. 12 seconds left on the clock. That's exactly what they needed, Gilly. That's exactly what they wow, needed. Wow, I'll tell you what, that was a big throw right there. That was a big time throw by Jace Kaufman as he finds a man down the left field or the left side of the field, scampering down. And we got a Kenton Moose first down. 
12 seconds to go. First and 10 from the 48. Kaufman will go under center. He's going to keep it himself. He's under heavy pressure. He rolls to the right side, looking to get rid of it. He's going to throw down the field, and he's got a man out there. And a catch. Oh, oh no. what a big Carson hit. Carson Barnes was hit hard, and I thought he made the catch, but he gets rocked, and he drops the ball with three seconds to go. Yeah, Mr. Stuck laid, laid the wood right there. Yes, he did. I love the aggressiveness of Chris Summers and the Waynesville Goshen Tigers. Let's see what they dial up here with three seconds to go. You know, I'd like to see something in the flat here, give his receiver a chance to, you know, move around here, uh, get something across the middle maybe and run towards the end zone. Well, it ought to be interesting. And, you know, Ridgemont dropping the safeties back. Coffin looks across the field. He's throwing deep down the left side. He's got a man out there, and oh boy. there's the flag. And that that's that you look, the clock is out of zeros, but they're gonna have another play, and that's a big time play there for the Tigers. Yeah, the defender, you know, got locked up with the offensive he player and he did, you're absolutely right. Wasn't so. turned around seeing the football, and you've got to make sure you see the football, or nine times out of ten, that official's going to throw the flag, and that's exactly what happened right there. Waynesville's going to get another crack at it. That'll be defensive pass interference, so everything falling right for the Tigers here with zeros on the clock. Pass interference, one more play till halftime. So they'll spot the ball, Gilly, somewhere. Let's see where they spot it at here. And the officials are discussing that. I, the play happened at the goal line. He was pushed out of bound right at the pylon. Boy, we see no scoring the first quarter and a half, and here we go. Uh, Ridgemont puts one in the end zone in Waynesfield right, knocking on the doorsteps. And they're going to put one second on the clock, Gilly. Looking down here on the sideline, one of the all-time Ridgemont great athletes, Mr. Timmy Wetzel's in the house tonight. <laughs> Had a great career at Miami of Ohio. Hardin County Sports Hall of Fame. That's right. That's right. Member. That's right. So they, I was going to say, I didn't understand why they put the second on the clock. They've taken it off, and the ball will be placed at the 12 yard line. So it'll be one play from the 12 yard line. Let's see what Jace Coffin and the Tigers do. What a what a huge momentum shift this would be if oh, the Tigers absolutely. put it in the end zone. Yeah, if they can punch it in right here. Coffin's going to keep road. it himself. He's going he's to roll to the right. He throws back to the end zone. He's got a man out there. Picked off. Picked off in the goal line. The Gophers hold strong, and they they'll go to halftime up six to nothing. After one half a play, the Richmond Golden Gophers lead the Waynesville Goshen Tigers six to nothing. We'll have second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to Richmond High School, where we're getting ready to start the second half here. Danny Holbert, Darren Gilbert. What a first half, Gilly, for the Richmond Golden Gophers. As you know, you want to talk about physicality. Both these teams real physical, but Richmond gets on the board. They lead 6 0. Well, and they got it, you know, in that, what, last five last minutes five of minutes, the yeah. second quarter and punched it in. And, you know, Waynesfield took the thing down and had it, what, inside their 20 yard line, had an opportunity, but a. Interception in the end zone by, I believe it was Cody Kaiser, nullified that opportunity for the Tigers. And going to be interesting second half here, partner. Waynesville gets the ball first, and they'll take the ball at the 15-yard line. This is Bredigan runs up the middle, and he is going to be hit immediately at about the 28-yard line. That's where the – and excuse me, that was number 10 for the Tigers, Brady Miller. Good job there by the Gophers. And the, the, the ability to see the uh, numbers did not get better here, Gilly. <laughs> but I will say this. The uh, the uh, temperature has dropped quite a bit. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> we are both trying I did to... finally find a little code here when I say little. <laughs> I probably both... look foolish in it, but you know what? It does keep me warm. Yeah, tall guy in a little coat. <laughs> yeah. 
Here come the Tigers. Jace Coffin will bring him to the line. He'll go Carson Barnes off the left side. And he gets a nice gain of about five yards there. Carson Barnes finally finding some daylight. Boy, he had a rough first half, Gilly, and credit that Ridgemont defensive well, he line. Took, he, he, was it him who took the hit in the backfield that got up slow? Yeah, he was. You know, and hey, I'll tell you what, Ridgemont is, is just so physical. They are. That'll bring up second and three from the 28. So they're going to get a seven-yard gain there for Barnes. They'll try to come around the right side and close to a first down. He's going to be awful close, isn't he? Bailey with the stop. And ball carrier. Looks like Grant Bredigan will win the carry. Looks like third and inches. And they'll go third and just a few inches, and the officials are going to stop and they'll call a timeout. They're going to measure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. While they're measuring, we're going to announce the thousand-dollar winner tonight. So senior night here at Ridgemont Gilly. Nice big crowd on hand. We've already talked about how nice this facility is with the track and the football field and the baseball field behind us and brand new concession stand over there. And boy, if you don't like green, don't come out here because everything's green, I'm telling you. It's green tonight. <laughs> but it is a very, very nice complex, so. Yeah, yeah. I remember Danny. In the mid 70s, used to play right down the road there, and the old Gopher. Yeah, absolutely. Field down there. I think this is called Jake Jeffrey Field, if I'm not mistaken. And Waynesfield. In here. Yeah, Waynesfield gets a Kenton Moose first down. Our first down sponsor tonight is a Kenton Moose. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at KentonMoose428.com. Back in the mid 70s, man, Ridgemont, they were. They were a power. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Good football teams. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 38. Well, I can even say good basketball teams. Yeah, I was going to say, they were really good in basketball, too. So they'll hand the ball off right up the middle. and Somebody's got there. him by the ankles. Yeah. Carson Barnes, the ball carrier, but not, nothing going okay. there. Xavier Stuck along with number... 57, Mr. Patrick Stacklin. P Stack, as they call him okay, here. Okay, that's the, fine. In the Mont. You P -Stack. may you may want to call him <laughs> P Stack. I'm just going to call him well, well, yeah, Mr. Look, Stacklin. I'll we'll give him his props here on WSN. Kaufman's going to hand the ball off. This is Gage Steinecke. He tries to go around the left, and nothing going. And a flag comes in late. And they're going to call a horse collar tackle, Gilly. Okay. That's exactly what they're going to call. The officials have already looked at each on other. Bailey, 66. Yeah. I think they got him with yeah. they're the gonna hands call it. on the backside of the. Yep, and the Ridgemont coach is up here in the booth with us. Well, up here on the top of the booth. Not real happy about that call, but they're going to call a personal foul against the Gophers, and that's a big-time foul. And the Tigers are moving the ball down the field. Gilly, how much momentum would this be for the Tigers mm. to get it in the end zone on their first drive of the second half? Yeah, on the road, absolutely. Yeah, because they really struggled moving the football they did. in the first half. They sure did. And they've put together a nice drive here, i.e. eight of a 15-yard penalty. Kaufman will bring him to the line. He's going to hand the ball off right up the middle, and that's Barnes. And he'll get a gain of about two yards, pushed back, but his foremost momentum will bring him worth a gain of about three yards. Ball carrier is number six. Host of Gophers Barnes. on the stop, Colton Manns. Henderson, Stacklin. We'll see if that extra point miss will come back to Haunt Ridgemont if Waynesville puts it here in the end zone. Second and seven for the Tigers. You know, he could come down to a simple kick. Last week, Ridgemont was up six to three on Corey Rawson. Right. Corey Rawson missed a game-tying field goal. 43-yarder they missed. There's a nice reverse there, and Ridgemont's all over that, but somehow the ball carrier gets away and makes something out of nothing. Ridgemont had him in the backfield, Gilly. And uh, he gets a gain of about three yards, and that was looks like Reed Waitman on the carry. Yeah, that all started with Mason Howard. Had him about five yards deep and just couldn't bring him down. Like you said, good effort there by the Tiger ball carrier to squeeze out as much as he could. Gilly, the, these two teams do what we talk about all the time. They run the ball effectively, and they stop the run. Both of them do that really well. They're, well, both they're so really doggone quick to the ball. Yeah, they sure are. 
There's a pitch back to Barnes. He gets some daylight. He's off the left side. And Carson Barnes with another Kenton Moose first down. And the Tigers are on the move. And there you see the strength of Carson Barnes. Stuck on the tackle there for the Gophers. Like you said, not until... No Wayne secret, Field, yeah. You know, reels off another first down. No secret to what uh, Coach Summers talked to him about at halftime. Said, boys, we're going to have to man up and uh, run that ball right down their throats, and that's exactly what they're doing. We'll go first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Coffin will hand the ball off to Barnes again as he gets a running start and picks up about three yards, and now it's the Carson Barnes show right now as the big tailbacks churning out some yards. number 16, Kaiser and Howard on the stop. Went down to use the restroom, partnered halftime, and ran into one of my former students that happened to be Cody Kaiser's dad. <laughs> Gil, you know everybody. Well, you know, that just means I'm getting old if yeah, I, I had him say. as students. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, you're exactly right. Toppin will bring him to the line, second and eight from the 35, and looks like somebody jumped there. And I think they're going to get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think are they going to get an encroachment? Gonna or are they going to get a? Going to get an encroachment on the Tigers, I believe. Uh, the officials will get together and talk about they this. They get a one. false start. Well, we'll have to wait and see here. Let's see what the call is. Let's see what he does with his hands here. Okay, well, offsides against Richmond. Yep, they got an encroachment. Yeah, or, excuse me, encroachment. You're right. And I meant to say earlier encroachment on the Gophers, but it's okay. So many technical terms, Gillian. There is. I'm telling you. Waynesville put together a nice drive here to open the second half. They've used up a big chunk of that clock, Gilly. You look at it. We're at 753 and counting. Coffin hands to Barnes. Barnes is taken down. I think that's Eaton. I think it was. Number eight for the Gophers, Landon Eaton. They stood him up. Ruprite also in on the stop. And bring up third and three from the 30. Well, they'll call it third and one. Let's go, Gophers. Let's get up the stop. You got to believe the Tigers are going to keep it on the ground, Gil. As effective as they've been here in the second half, running the ball. Coach Josh Spencer came up and visited with us at halftime. Sure nice did. to see him. Coffin will go under center. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to pick up another Kenton Moose first down. And he oh, gets a nice going. chunk of change there. He gets about six yards. Gilly, I thought he was stopped by about the one-yard one gain, and he takes it for another five. He ping-ponged off a couple. And this is what Wayne, This is exactly what Waynesville needed to do to open up the second half, Gilly, as they put together an, a fantastic opening drive here. Yeah, they got to come away to with some points here. Yeah. They'll hand the ball off. They'll go right side, and he stumbles around, and a nice gain of about six yards. Grant Bredigan on the carry. Wow, did he make a nice cut he back did. there? Looked like he slipped at one point, and he made up for it. Yeah. They'll go second and three. Kaiser on the tackle for the Golden Gophers. And the Tigers are in the thermal guard window and door red zone. Quality windows and doors from a local company you can trust. Visit thermalguardwindows.com or call 419-229-4273 for your free estimate. <laughs> Coffin will go to the line. He'll hand the ball off. This is Carson Barnes off the left side, and he is met there head on by a host of Ridgemont Gophers. No panic here in the Tigers, Gilly, as they're just marching down to about the 10-yard line. Boy, what a big play there by Stackland shooting that. Gap in there, making that big stop right there. No gain. Third and two from the 10-yard line. Kaufman goes under center. He's going to keep it himself as he sp spins and wins there. Gilly gets towards the goal line, and he's getting a big push from his offensive lineman, and the ball came out, but it looked like he yeah, was already down. I think he was already I down for progress. You're right. Oh, man, they'll get another Kenton Moose first down there as Jace Kaufman, the senior quarterback, gets some big-time yardage, and the, and the Tigers are on the move as they sit at the five-yard line, Gilly, first in goal. Looked like Cromer coming up from the bottom of the pile, but too many gophers to call names right there. Yeah, like you said, first in goal here. And they've got to come away with some points here down What's six. What's carbon nothing. copy of Richmond? Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, you're taking exactly. the ball and just – Running it up the field and 
making you defend. Coffin will go under center. He's going to keep it himself. And, Gil, he gets close to that end zone, and I don't believe he got in. No, I think he's inside to two. They're going to say second and goal, Jace Kaufman. I, Gilly, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't run that two more times. Jace Kaufman effective on that sneak as he's finding those gaps and he's getting up the yards. Okay, looks like a partner about the two-yard line. Henderson was, was in on the stop. The, the least famous recipe scoreboard says he's on the four-yard line, but Gilly, he's on. He's closer than the four-yard line. Yeah, I he's. Got I got him inside the three. Yeah, inside the three, maybe the two. We're a little higher up here to see it. No handoff, and he's in. A okay, Tiger touchdown, touchdown. with 4.37 to go. The Waynesville Goshen Tigers knock this one up at six as they take a three-yard plunge, and they go into the end zone. So, Gilly, what a drive for the Tigers. Oh. What a response coming out of the halftime and a big-time job there by the Waynesville Goshen Tigers. Yeah, that was an impressive drive. So Waynesville will go for two here with 4.37 to go. Yeah, points have been at a premium, partner. They're actually oh, going to no, kick it. Oh, they're going to kick it. Okay. They're going to kick it here. So we'll see what happens here as Waynesville tries for the extra point. Hold is good and kick is off of mark. And we are knotted up at six. With 4.37 to go in the third quarter, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers and the Ridgemont Gophers are knotted at six. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Ridgemont High School with 4.37 to go in the third quarter. And Waynesville's just just taking the crowd out of this one, Gilly, as they go on a big-time drive to open the third quarter, and they didn't give Ridgemont much time left here in the third quarter. Yeah, they got the answer they were looking for. We're knotted up at six here with a little over four and a half minutes to go here in this third quarter. Ridgemont played a tight one last week as they beat Corey Ross in six to three, so they're not going to flinch when it comes to tight games here. There's the kick, and it is fielded at about the 15-yard line. They'll bring it across the 20. This is Mason Howard. He tries to get to the right side. Howard gets around, and he's going to be taken down at about the 37-yard line. And the Gophers got some nice field position there with 429 to go in the third quarter. <laughs> I'm not so sure, partner. He just didn't slip on his own trying to right. make that cut. That, yeah, that grass is getting a little uh, slippery as the night goes on. Yeah, the dew's starting to set in, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, setting in my bones right now because it's getting real cold. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Jacob, did you not have a chance to put us in the booth tonight or just put us up on top of the booth? Thank goodness, like I said, I found an extra small jacket. <laughs> Here go the Gophers. They'll run the ball right up the middle. This is Henderson. Boy, we saw a big dose of him in the first half. Jevin Henderson was everything the Gophers needed. Hey, a big thank you to the uh, Ridgemont coaching staff and the Waynesville coaching staff for getting our stats out to us this week. Tremendous job by both those programs. Sure did. Makes it so much easier. Oh, makes us help or makes to, it to prepare yeah. for a broadcast. Absolutely, it does. Can't so, forget our sponsors either. Absolutely. It was second and seven from the 39. Mans hands the ball off to Howard. Howard spinning around, and he's got a break. He goes across the 50 to the 45, and he's taken down at the 40-yard line. Oh, Mason Howard, we make, and we're going to get a helmet to helmet, I believe. It, well, it's either going to be a – no, I'm going to say a face mask or a horse collar. I think you're right. It's going to be something. That's going to be another 15 yards tacked on that play. And it is going to be against Waynesville. The officials are pointing that way, and let's just see what the call is. Big, big run right there. Personal foul. Face okay. You were right, Gil. I did not see the face mask. Big thank you to our sponsors tonight. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, our scoreboard sponsor. The Kenton Moose is our first down sponsor. And Thermal Guard Window and Door, our red zone sponsor. Thank you to those community agencies who help us out each and every Friday night. So here come the Gophers. They get down the field immediately. Mans will line them up under center. They'll yeah, go first a, and They're getting a taste of Mr. Howard, aren't they? They sure are. 
They'll go Henderson off the right side and gets a gain of about five yards. Jevin Henderson. They'll go. Clock will continue to run with 3.20 to go here in the third quarter. I need new bifocals. Howard and Henderson. It is the double H duo here in Ridgemont. Second and six from the 25. Clock continues to run. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Ridgemont High School. NWCC matchup. They'll hand the ball off to Howard. Howard goes around the left side, and he's hit immediately. And that Tiger defensive line. And there comes a flag in, a late flag. And there was a little bit of a skirmish between uh, one of the Ridgemont offensive linemen and one of the Waynesfield defensive linemen. Just might have an unsportsmanlike. I think that's what we're going to get. But I'm not real sure who it's going to be on. I didn't see any any punches thrown or anything. I just saw a couple kids standing there side by side looking at each other. And the officials are discussing that. This one may appear to be against Waynesfield. See what they call here. And it is going to be marked off as they're going. Looks like Coach Summers is asking for an explanation. And they're going to say dead ball per unsportsmanlike conduct against Waynesfield Goshen. Coach Summer's not happy about that one. He's not happy. No, he's not. And that's going to put the ball in the thermal guard window and door red zone. Puts it right about the nine-yard line, Gilly. And Ridgemont's on the drive again with 2.45 to go here in the third quarter. Mans will go under center. He's going to hand to Howard. Howard tries to go around the right side. He's got a scene, and he's going to be taken down by, oh, no, he gets away. Are you kidding me? Mason Howard gets away from the Tiger defenders. Wow, Kelly, I, thought they had him, I thought they had him in the backfield. They did. They, they stretched the play out, and he uh, used that left-hand stiff arm and turned the corner there and broke a couple tackles. Takes it down to the two-yard line. Well, you want to talk about a response. First, the Tigers come back in the third quarter, drive the length of the field, put it in the end zone, and Ridgemont brings it right back down the field. Okay, Absolutely. we we going to go to the, the other H right here? Well, here we go. Manns will go under center. He's got Henderson and Howard behind him. He's going to hand to Howard. Howard goes up the middle, and I don't think he got in, Gilly. I don't either. I think a host. You want to talk the about The Tigers it. met him right at the line of scrimmage. Tough defensive stance by the Waynesville Goshen Tigers. They manned up right there. Well, That's bringing he was close to putting that thing on the ground just because of the penetration of the Tigers in those gaps. Very fortunate. They'll go third and goal from the two, Gilly. Mans will bring him to the line. He's got Howard and Henderson. Henderson off to the left, Howard off to the right. He's going to keep it himself. He's under pressure, and he's taken oh, down. Big play. You want to talk about a big play. The Tigers come out of nowhere and sack him, and that's going to bring up fourth and goal from about the 10-yard line. That might be the play of the game, yeah, Billy. Layden Porter Layden right Layden Porter with a big-time, big-boy play. My goodness, Gilly. Yeah, Porter coming in with 20 solo tackles and five sacks. Make that number six on the season. And there's going to be a timeout. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth with 1.17 to go in the third quarter. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Back here at Richmond High School with 1.17 to go in the third quarter. Ridgemont a fourth and goal, Gilly, as they take a big-time sack. And it's make or break here for the Gophers. Manns will go under center. He's going to roll to the left. He's under heavy pressure, looking for anybody. He throws in the end zone, and the ball is knocked down, and the Tigers will take over in a big-time defensive stance by the Waynesville Goshen Tigers. Yeah, it looked like they were going to. 
appeared to be number 10. Let me take a look here. Yeah, they were going for Xavier Stuck. Xavier Stuck, he, yeah. He was wide, He was open in the end zone, and the Tigers collapsed. Closed and, on it yeah, really they quick, sure did they? Yeah, Closed is a better word than collapse, but uh, you're right. And what a big-time stance for the Tigers. And, Gilly, you know what they're going to do. They're going to keep the ball on the ground and see if they can't run this thing out with a 110 to go here in the third yeah, quarter. The, the penetration of Waynesfield, you know, forcing – the Gophers to play on their heels right there, but like you said, a big stop. You know, getting the football back, that's a huge play for, for So Kaufman will bring it under center for one ten, or first and ten, excuse me. They'll hand the ball off, try to go around the right side. Not much happening there, maybe a yard, yard and a half there. And that's Grant Bredigan. Boy, they've kept Bredigan in check tonight. They have. Gilly. They really have. Uh, other than a few good runs by Carson Barnes, that running game has uh, has been it's tough sledding. Now, they've taken they've taken their time on that first drive in the third quarter. But we haven't seen the big hit no, we haven't. Yeah, no, we haven't seen the big hit. And, uh, that, you know, that's what Waynesville's hoping for is to get Bredigan out into some space and get his uh, athletic ability in use. You know, what I mean by the big hit, not defensively no, no, tackling no, 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 no. somebody, but the big, the big play. play. Yeah, the yeah, big absolutely. play. Absolutely. So the Coffin, yardage buster. Coffin will bring him under center. That's second and nine from the nine-yard line. They'll hand to Carson Barnes, and he is hit immediately, and he turns it around a little bit, goes to about the 11-yard line, and that will probably do it for the third quarter as the clock continues to wind down. Boy, he tried to get away, but give number 72 credit there. Mr. Dawson stepping into there, that linebacker spot. Nice Hot number there. playing a linebacker, but I'll tell you what, Kid plays both ways, plays on the offensive line, also at the linebacker spot, big play right there. And we're going to the fourth quarter, partner. We are going to the fourth quarter. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Back here at Richmond High School, start of the fourth quarter, and uh, Waynesville's backed up to the nine-yard line, Gilly, but uh, the wind has picked up big time here on the football field. It is really getting cold out here. I apologize if you can hear my teeth chatter. I'm telling you. Goffin will bring him up to the line, third and seven from the nine-yard line. Ridgemont trying to keep him backed up here. Coffin's going to throw the ball, and he's got a man out there. Reception made, and he'll go to about the 18-yard line, and I think he got a first down, Gilly. I think he's got it. Wow. When I say wow, that yeah. wind was strong. Yeah, they're going to go. Boy, let's see what they call here because that's awful close to a first down. The officials are checking it out here. And they're going to measure. They're going to measure because it's that close. Measurement. You know, Waynesfield had the Ridgemont defender on his heels right there, and that ball just fluttered out there. It did flutter out there. You're right. So That's a heck of a catch right there for Waynesfield. They'll bring the chains out here to measure. Every possession from now on, partner, for this oh, next goodness, 11 minutes you. and 50 seconds has got to be treated as a piece of gold. Yeah. You got to take care of it and protect it. And looks they're going to get a first down, Gilly. First okay. down for the Tigers. Okay. Hi, man. 11.50 to go here. I mean, both teams just like to chew up, and you talked about it in pregame. You hit the nail on the head. They want to chew clock, and they want to chew yardage yeah. up, and carbon copy of both ball clubs. And, Gilly, let's give Waynesfield a lot of credit. They they kind of got out muscled in the first half, Ooh. but, boy, they have punched Bridgemont tonight in the mouth in the second half here, and it's just a, a flip the script oh, of it's both just, halves. It's just yeah. turning into a an absolute uh, – physical contest. There's the Gophers response. Gophers defensive line. What a great job there as they tackle Carson Barnes. Boy, he didn't get anything, Gilly. There's no gain on that carry there. That'll bring up second and ten. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Henderson on the stop along with some of the Gopher teammates. Clock continues to run. 11-14. You know, you put Bailey and Eaton there at the defensive ends, two, two big, strong kids. You got, what, uh, Stacklin on the inside. And, boy, they – oh, my goodness, he got away from him. He got out – he was caught behind the line of scrimmage. And there you see Grant Bredigan gets another Kenton Moose first down. Gilly, they had him behind the line they of scrimmage. They had him behind the line of scrimmage and his ability to – 
to break through and slithered his way through and broke into the secondary. And Waynesfield in no hurry to get up here. That, that clock continues to run. That's their best friend right now as they get big time run by Grant Bradigam. He was behind the line of scrimmage and he made nothing or something out of nothing. Yeah, Jordan Olson right there with a stop to Junior. And, and there's a pass play. Incomplete pass on the play, broken up by number 21. Jace Kaufman was his intended target, I believe is, got to make out a number on that. It was Ty Wireman, Tyler I think. Tyler Wireman going across the middle. And the ball gets knocked down. Yeah, a little boy, slant. They're lucky that one wasn't picked off. Oh, it but if he catches it? Oh, if he catches it, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, Tyler Wireman, a good receiver for the Tigers. Yeah, difference between the first half and the second half throwing the ball is like <laughs> night and day. I mean, the sure wind has really picked up. Coffin's going to hand the ball off to Carson Barnes, and he goes through that line, and he gets a nice chunk of change there. Six big yards, Gilly, and they're at the 39-yard line with 10.25 to go. Cromer on the stop along with Olsen. Boy, the momentum has really shifted in Waynesville's favor since that goal line stance on the other end, Gilly. They've done a great job here. Well, and it's going to be interesting. You know, is this two down territory for them? Does, you know, does Coach Summers roll sure. the dice and go third and four from the 30, or from the 35, excuse me? They'll pitch back to Barnes. He goes across the right side and he is close to a first down. He, no, he's going to pick up a first down. That offensive line pushes him for a first down. Another Kenton Moose first down. Tonight's first down sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 and Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. Stuck in Howard on the stop. Clock continues to run at 9.49. It's a big run right there by that young man. Third down, wasn't it? I think it was like third and four. It was third and four, and they got the first down. So they'll hand the ball off. They'll go around the left side, and there's some daylight there. And there's, you're going to get a face mask, Gilly. That's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Is that what you saw? I okay. did see it. Yeah, and Gage Steinecke was taken down, but they grabbed him on the face mask, and that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Kaiser and Stuck on the stop for the Gophers. Or, I'm not oh so my, sure. I'm not partner. so sure. I not thought so I saw. Not so fast, uh, my friend. We got a hold. I thought I saw a face mask. Well, some of the Tiger players were, were indicating face mask, and that's what I thought I saw on the tackle. Oh, they baited you in on that they one, sure didn't did. they? They sure did. So Richmond catches a break there, and the ball gets pushed back to about the 31-yard line. Oh, that's a huge break. That is a huge break. Big time play. First and 20. First and 20, 9.24 to go. Clock continues to roll. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Ridgemont High School in a key NWCC battle. These two Titans in this league going at it, just punching each other back and forth. Coffin will bring him to the line. He'll hand the ball off. They'll go left side, and they got a seam. There goes Bredigan down the left side. He's at the 40 to the 35. He cuts back. This is Gage Steinecke to the 25-yard line, and Gage Steinecke takes it all the way up the field. My goodness, he looked like he got shot out of a rocket. Oh, we got an injured gopher on the field. Looks like we got an injured field. gopher on the field, and the trainers and the coaching staff, and we'll let them tend to him. We'll step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Richmond High School. The injured player was number 40, Jevin Henderson. And unfortunately, he had to be carried off the field, Gilly. He couldn't put any weight on that leg, and that looked like a, a nasty injury. Yeah, you know, we wish him the best. Absolutely. And hopefully it's he's a heck of a something player. minor. But, yeah, he's definitely in some pain, and trainers are right there on the spot with him. Yeah. So Waynesville will go first and 10 from the 22. Coffin will bring him to the line. They'll pitch back to... Carson Barnes as he goes towards the 10 yard line and the Tigers are on the move. Yeah, they're seeing something from the press, <clears throat> excuse me, the press box to attack. On the left side, yeah. On the left side of the Gophers and, you know, losing a player of Mr. Henderson oh, that's doesn't help loss. matters that's any. Big loss. For sure. That'll put Waynesville Goshen in the thermal guard window and door red zone. However, you got to play next man up mentality and 
That's why you have backups at every position. And we'll see what Ridgemont can do defensively. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 12-yard line. They'll hand the ball to the first man up. Carson Barnes goes towards the goal line. He's knocked down at about the three-yard line. Carson Barnes, boy, he took off, and I thought he was going to go right towards the goal line. And that clock continues to run. We're down under eight minutes to go. Waynesfield knocking on the doorstep to take the lead in this one, Gilly. Yeah, just in, inside the five-yard line is the Tigers. Cromer on the stop. Boy, I'll tell you what. Well, I don't know what they did at halftime, but they fired these kids up, and Waynesfield's played a second half like nobody's business. Well, both these coaches, you know, experienced, know what they're doing, have had fabulous seasons yeah, this Coffin's year. Coffin's going to keep it himself as he goes towards the goal line, and no indication yet. They're still doing a lot of pushing, but uh, he's going to fall short at about the two-yard line. Quarterback keeper, no gain on the play, second and one. That'll bring up second and one. That's what they're calling it. Or are they calling it first and goal? First they're calling and goal. they're calling it first and goal, Gilly. Okay. Yeah, first and goal. He gets another. Kenton moves first down. And the Tigers got four chances to knock this one in from the two-yard line. Coffin's going to go under center. He's going to hand the ball off the left side. And I don't think he got in. I do not think he got in. Yeah, stuck on the stop along with his teammate, Cromer. Olsen, there's absolutely no quit in this Gopher football team. I'm, I'm telling you, Gilly, I am super impressed with yeah, these teams. Yeah, they're, you know, this is a team that has just keep build, kept building for the last couple of years, and we talked about it earlier. This is a senior dominant team and really, really good athletes, and they're showing it again tonight. They bring up second and goal. Clock is at 6.31 to go here in this game. All knotted at six. Kaufman's got Barnes in the backfield with him. He's going to keep it himself. Quarterback sneak and touchdown, Tigers. Jace Kaufman takes it in from two yards out, and the Tigers lead this one 12-6 with 6.19 to go. What a big-time scoring drive, Gilly. Big time scoring drive. More importantly, this two point conversion right here, if that's what they're deciding to do. And let's see what Chris Summers decides to do here. Last Looks time like they they're were, lining up for the kick. Yeah, they went for the kick the last time. And okay, maybe not. Maybe they're <laughs> tricking me. I think they're tricking you, Gilly. I think this cold weather has got you seeing things. Nope, they're going to kick it. You were right, Gilly. Please apologize. <laughs> Sorry, big guy. <laughs> With feeling. I, it looked like they were With a little feeling it. behind it. <laughs> There's the kick, and it is off, and it goes underneath the crossbar. So with 6.19 to go, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers take a 12-6 lead. We'll step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Back here at Richmond High School with 619 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert, the Tigers from Waynesville Goshen have taken a 12-6 lead, Gil, and they did it with some physical football, running, running, running. Yeah, and more running. I thought you were over there froze to death. You no, no. Dramatic pause. You Not didn't yet. Say anything. Not yet. <laughs> You're just waiting to get One to that car. About it. You know we got to help Jacob tear this stuff down, right? It's okay, right <laughs> behind is my big red vehicle, and I have that automatic start. And it, with about two and a half minutes to go, it's there you go. it's going to be turned on. There you go. So Waynesville will kick off from the 40, kick right down the middle to go to the left side, and it's going to go out of bounds, and the flag is going to be thrown. So started out going down the middle, Gil, and it, the wind caught it and took it over to the sidelines. And the Gophers are going to get some good field position here with 6.19 to go. Now, Gil, you got Henderson out of the game, so they, they really, mm. you know, you got Mason Howard. It's been Henderson Howard all night. Uh, let's see what uh, Connor Manns now decides maybe you to go do. to a jet sweep oh, with uh, Stuck. I was going to say, I mean, Xavier Stuck may get some more carries, too. He's very capable. Third quarter tonight, 6th grade through 12th grade, Ridgeway Church of Christ, immediately following the game. you got to believe with the way the game is played out, to this 619 this could be the last possession for Ridgemont sure. so they've got to they've got to piece something together 
So Connor Manns will bring him to the line. He's got Mason Howard. He'll go into the gun, and he's going to hand off to Mason Howard. Mason Howard goes across the line, gets a gain of about two yards, and he'll be taken down there by a host of Tigers. That clock continues to run. Gophers down 12-6 here on senior night at Richmond High School. Colton Webb on the stop. Looking down on the sidelines, it appears that yeah, he's got Henderson's his shoulder pads off. He's got his off, shoulder yeah. pads off. You know, they got some crutches out there. He must be a lower yeah. lower leg injury. Here goes Howard. Tries to go around the left side, and he's going to be close to a first down. My goodness, what a block by number three, Cody Kaiser. And Jace Kaufman, the quarterback who's playing safety tonight for the Tigers, was hit hard, and he's holding his ribs right now. And that's not a good look for well, the That's Tigers. a combination. You remember, he yes. took that shot in the first half, too. I think yeah. that was him. Yeah, remember? Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. So that'll bring up third in a short one. 5.15 to go. Connor Manns brings him to the line. Ready Ridgemont team. He's got Mason Howard directly behind him on his left side. They'll hand him Howard, and he's going to pick up a Kenton Moose first down as he goes towards the midfield stripe. And he picks up a Kenton Moose first down. Kenton Moose, tonight's first down sponsor. For good food, good fellowship, and friends, that's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton, online at kentonmoose428.com. You spend a little time at the Kenton Moose, Gilly. Fellowship. Mm -hmm. When you walk in, it's like Norm from Cheers, isn't it? Gil! You gotta have that food. <laughs> that's right. They'll go first and 10 from the 48, 445 to go. Connor Manzo going the gun. He's got Mason Howard off to his left. He's going to hand to Howard. He tries to go around the left side, and he finds some daylight and picks up about three yards. Well, here, here's what I like about both these teams, Gil. They are true to what they do. They do not go away from that run. You know, Ridgemont down here 12-6, but they are staying it's steady with fancy. that run. No, it's not, and they are staying true to that run, and they are at midfield. It's hat on hat football. It sure is. It sure is. Like what Travis Reddick has done over here. He's done a nice job. So they'll go Connor. Connor Manns will go in the gun. He's throwing the ball across the field, and he's got a man out there. Reception is made at about the 45, and he goes towards the 43. And that reception is made by Xavier Stuck. We haven't called his name a lot, but we know he is a big-time player. Gilly, he's capable of a big-time strike. Yeah, it sure is. Carson Barnes getting up slow. Clock continues to run, 345. you got to wonder... Gill, if they're going to use a timeout here soon with 3.40 and the clock continues to run. It's going to be a lot of sore boys tomorrow oh morning. Oh, my goodness. A lot of ice. Mans is in the gun. He's got two rece three receivers to his right. He looks across the field. He throws back to the left. He's got, oh, Mason Howard. He had him out there at the 40-yard line. And, boy, if he catches that ball, Gill, he's gone. Oh. And that's going to bring up fourth and well, one. Well, he's, he's secured a first down, yeah, you know. Yeah. Definitely a first down because it was beyond the sticks. And yeah, that's a second one tonight that he's just taken his eye off and turned he's up made, a little and, bit too quick. Yeah, and, and look, Mason Howard's played a heck of a game. Oh, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a big time player. I can't do what he does, and no. that's going on both sides of the ball. And You and I can't do what Jacob O'Neill does. We, we could probably exactly. just sit here and just talk. Exactly. <laughs> he's the man on the camera. He is the man on the camera. So Mans is in the gun. He looks across the field, fourth and one, throws across the middle. He's got a man out there, oh, and a reception is made, catch. and he's going to take it into the end zone, and the Gophers are going to tie this one up. Are you kidding me? A big-time strike. I think that went to number eight, Mr. Landon Eaton. Landon Eaton with a big-time catch. What a throw, Gilly, as right the down Gophers the tie this one up at 12 apiece with 3.17 to go. Yeah, right down the scene. So you want to talk about a big-time extra point or a two-point conversion, Gilly, this is everything right here. And they're going to go for the extra point as they've got Colton Manns going to try to take the lead here with 3.17 to go. Kick is up, and it is no good. So we are still tied at 12 with 3.17 to go. We'll step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Seventeen to go here at Ridgemont High School. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert, 
And the Gophers have tied this one up at 12. Gilly, I, I just wonder if they gave Waynesville too much time here because uh, if they get a good kickoff return here and uh, run that clock out, we'll see what happens here. But this is a tight one. We knew we knew this was going to be a slugfest. We knew it was going to be low scoring. We mm -hmm. have been treated to an absolute gem tonight. Yep. You, you can talk about all the big time games in the area. It doesn't get better than this right here. Yeah, when you you know this, this Division Seven football, Northwest Ohio is really really good. And they'll get it at about the 15. They'll go to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and about the 32 yard line. That's where the Tigers will take over with three minutes and 12 seconds to go in this one. Yeah, when I say small school football, I'm talking about schools that have, what, Danny, under 80 yeah, boys? Yeah, I was going to say enrollment under, yeah, you're right. They're graduating about 40 kids a year in each class. And, you know, in some schools, that's big classes in Division Seven. So here come the Tigers. They get a chance to respond. It's been an absolute street fight tonight with 3.12 to go here in the fourth quarter. Coffin will bring him the line. He's got Carson Barnes, Grant Bredigan behind him. He's going to hand the ball off. This is Steinecke. Steinecke oh, is nice hit hard. Play. Gage Steinecke was hit hard. Jaden Sifrit and Mason Howard. And Mason Howard does it all offensively and defensively. Go. Clock is at 2.53 to go. Tigers taking their time on the offensive end. We'll go second and 10 from the 30. Coffin looks to throw. He's going to throw across the middle, and he's got a man out there, and it oh, is almost intercepted. Goodness, stuck about my got goodness, it. he had Grant Bradigan or Grant Bradigan running down the middle of the field, and he almost gets it picked off. Nice job by the Gopher defensive backfield. Yeah, Olson and Stuck both going for the football, and Stuck had a beat on it, and ran into Olson right there. Waynesfield really lucky that ball wasn't picked off by the safety stuck. Boy, he covers a lot of ground sure in that does. secondary spot, sure doesn't does. he? He sure does. He's lanky. He gets around there. So here come the Tigers, third and 10 for the 31. Coffin will bring him to the line. He's going to hand the ball off to Bredigan. Bredigan finds the seam on the right side. And well, that's a big stop if you're a, a gopher. Because that's going to bring up fourth and about six. And what does Waynesfield do here with 2.21 to go? Down for the and a big time decision maker here. What's Coach Summers going to call? Clocks at 2-10 and running. Boy, he's, he's going to go for he's it. He's going to go for it. Week 10, and he's going to go for it. Waynesville comes into this game 7-2. Ridgemont at 7-2. The biggest play of the game right now with 158 to go. Fourth and five from the 31. Kaufman brings him to the You're line. You're Ridgemont. you got to be smart, not jump. Oh, and there I think we go. they just did. There they did, and they just gave him a first down. They just gave him a first down. Ridgemont jumped, had them back where they wanted him. Oh, my goodness. That's a difference in a pass play versus a run. And they helped him out. Ridgemont helped him out. Fourth and five. That's going to Now it's going to make it a real short in about two. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, I, I thought it was. The, the board had fourth and five, Gilly. That's why I said it was sure. a first down. And it's just inside two yards from my angle. Oh boy. Still. Huge difference between fourth and two and fourth and seven. Yeah, still a big play here with 143 to go. Boy, we've had a dandy tonight. Coffin will bring him to the line. He's got Carson Barnes in the backfield with him. He's going to keep it himself. And boy, I don't know, Gilly. I don't know if it. Ooh, if, ooh, I don't look think at the he spot got it. on this. I, side. I don't think he got it. And if the spot is what I think it is, it's going to be Ridgemont football. He's short of his. Oh, oh, that's going to be too close to count here. I don't. He's short. I don't think he got it. I, I do not think he got I know, it. I know they're going to measure it. Yeah. But that football. That is, is really not close. over that yard mark. Yeah. That is really close. He's a football short. And let's see what they say. Maybe it's a, maybe it's the angle we're looking at, Gilly, because the the Tigers seem to think they have it, and Coach Redding Boy, is out of the field. It's close. I, well, and now now the chains are out there. It looks like he's going to have it. So. It's a huge play, a huge play, and Gilly. Well, got he it. does have. Oh my goodness, he got it by a mile. He got it by. He got it by a football. <laughs> uh, from my vantage point, it looked like he didn't have it. From where we're sitting. Well, but how huge was the encroachment? 
Oh yeah, big time. You know big that time. makes that makes it so much easier. Yeah. Fourth time. and less than two versus fourth and seven. So Ridgemont, or excuse me, Waynesfield will keep the ball as the clock continues to run. One thirty-one to go. Coffin will bring him to the line. He's going to keep it himself under heavy pressure, and he's going to be taken down. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh, a big time Colton sack Bailey. by number fifty-five, I believe, for the Gophers. That's actually Colton Bailey. Oh, it was Colton 66. Bailey, sixty-six. You're right. Oh, he just he just dismantled the yes, the did. left tackle and used his hands and. Waynesville shredded the block. Timeout. We're going to keep it here with 1.15 to go. But you're right, number 66, Colton Bailey, just destroyed that defensive line and gets in there for a big time sack, maybe the play of the game. So, what a game we've had here tonight, Gilly. Everything we expected with 1.15 to go. Both teams come in at 7 and 2. Both, both secured a spot in the playoffs. Yeah, Ridgemont's going to – if Ridgemont wins this, they'll finish 7-1 and one in the Northwest Central Conference. Waynesfield would finish 7 – or excuse me, 6-2 and two if they win this one. Well, the last report I saw, partner, Upper Soda Valley was up 16 to nothing. I did and see half. that. I did see that. And USV already has a share of the league title. They're Correct. trying to win it by themselves tonight. Depends on whether they want to share or they want to, they want to be stingy. That's right. Second and 16 for the Tigers. They'll bring up second and 16 from the 36. But regardless, nobody saw what was coming with Ridgemont this year. No, 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 you no, know? no. They've had a fantastic For the game. conference. The conference has been so doggone competitive. Coffin's going to throw the ball. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll to his right. And there's a face mask, and there'll be 15 oh, yards right boy. there. And Coffin's head jerked there's around. There's actually two, two flags. flags down. We'll see what the calls are. I did see the face mask. I did see that. Well, you said that earlier. I, I did. I did. <laughs> and it turned into a hole. I know. I did. <laughs> I, now, I know I saw it this time, Gil. <laughs> Do you have frost on your glasses I yet? I could have frost on my glasses. See what they call here. You know, I lied. I was going to start the car. A hold against Waynesfield. And at 2.30, Danny. Two flags on the, on the call. You're ignoring me. What's that? So that's going to start to car 2.30. I was going to say, but you better not. It looks like we're going to play a little overtime. 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 And, Gilly, there's no face mask call yet, but they have they threw two flags. Ladies and gentlemen, that I was not the one that called the face mask. I saw Kaufman's head jerk around, and he is he's over on the sideline. He's upset about that. And Coach Reddick is upset about something. And the officials is doing a good job of getting together, sorting this one out. Chess match. Yeah, you're right. So the officials are trying to sort this one out. Well, I think Coach Reddick, you know, he was deciding, do I want to decline that? And put them in the third, like you're right. third down. And it is a hole. Okay, he's he's gonna, he's gonna decline it. Yeah, you're right. Third down, third and sixteen. Okay. All right, here we go. The enthusiasm over here on the. Well, partner, I've missed two face face masks tonight. I've called, but it didn't happen, so. What do I know? Does that mean we get to say up oh, here, I'm sorry? <laughs> I, do, I do apologize. <laughs> I just saw Coffin's head. Well, I'm telling around. you what, it's, you know what, we got a great view up here. Boy, it's a long way from the field. It sure is. Coffin's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll to the right, throws back to the left. He's got Carson Barnes Oh, out nice there. play by Mason oh, Howard. Mason Howard just stayed at home and knocks Carson Barnes down. And... Ridgemont calls a quick timeout. They were Johnny on the spot on that wow. play right there. Waynesville tried a little redirection to throw back across the field to Carson Barnes. What a disciplined play by, you know, Mason Howard right there. 17, one yard. 
They'll bring up fourth and 17. And <laughs> Partner, you almost got to kick the ball away, don't you? And put Ooh. your defense on the field with fourth. And you give the Ridgemont the ball here at midfield with 50-some seconds to go. Stranger things have happened, you know. Looking at the timeout situation, Ridgemont has one left. Waynesfield with two. 56 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Gil, I believe you're doing a little play-by-play. -play. We got to switch. I've, I've, done, I've done it basketball-wise. <laughs> it's, it's the announcing, the announcing part of the these here. <laughs> you just like to hear me talk. <laughs> So Carson Barnes will go back for uh, – he's gonna. they're going to punt the ball away, and I think this is the right call, Gilly. You punt the ball away, put your defense out there and play Boy, for Boy, it better be a, a good snap. Yeah, we watched number 66 almost get two blocks in that first half. Let's see what Ridgemont does if they put the pressure on. So Barnes is back to punt the ball, and he gets the kick up, almost blocked, and they'll catch it at the 30. They'll bring it to the 35, and they'll go out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. And Cromer takes it out about 37. So Richmond's got 48 seconds to go, Gil. What are you thinking? <laughs> Find some way to get the thing down the field, you know. You're down Henderson right now. Yeah. And I, I, I had Stuck not, hasn't touched the ball. And the I, wind has yeah. turned into a factor. They've taken Jib and looks like they've taken Jib and Henderson off the field or off the sidelines. He was over there. Okay, he's over there on crutches. Well, I just that. wish the kid the best. Yeah, absolutely. You know? He's a heck of a player. He's a heck of a player, and he's worked his tail off as well as his teammates. And to have an opportunity to play in the OHSA playoffs, no matter who they play or what seed they are, hopefully he can recover within a week's time and bounce back and play. Connor Mansell go into the gun. We're first and 10 from the 31. 48 seconds to go here. All knotted at 12. Senior night at Ridgemont High School. They'd like nothing better than to bring home a victory for their home faithful here. And the officials have stopped play again. Not real sure what's going on. Okay, Ridgemont is out of timeouts. Okay, Ridgemont's out of timeouts. So. Waynesfield with two. So if you're Waynesfield, you want to keep that thing in the middle of the field. In the middle field, you're absolutely right. So here comes Mans. He's in the gun. He's under pressure. He throws across the middle. They got a man to the 45, to the 50, and that'll go to the, about the 46-47-yard line. Xavier stuck. And a little set, slant. Set the ball down, and the clock will not start running until. But look at their poise. Yeah. I mean, there's no rushing with, with the Gophers. Man's almost dropped that one, throws to the sidelines, and the ball's dropped, and a flag is flag comes flying in from the sidelines, and one from the back line. That was a late flag way well, back there. I'm going to say it's either a hold, defensive hold, or an offensive pass interference because it comes from this side where Eaton was, the receiver. Well, now, Gilly, we're 0 for whatever tonight, calling penalties. No, 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 no. Oh, no, yeah, no. I am. Not yeah. we. <laughs> Unless you got a little mouse in your pocket. <laughs> well, if I do, he's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> he's absolutely frozen. Mickey he Mouse. Froze man. Solid. Hello, everyone. I'm frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, we, we, we get into Stay office. tuned next week, ladies and gentlemen, for <laughs> Gilly, two new announcers. Yeah, Gilly and I will get sent to <laughs> Kazakhstan to do uh, <laughs> bowling tournaments. <laughs> All right, so they get that mess sorted out. And the game clock, they say, will start on the snap. So 34 seconds to go. Ridgemont's got the ball at the 48-yard line. Timeout, Waynesfield So Waynesfield's going to take it. We're going to keep it right here, Gil. So uh, Ridgemont with 34 seconds to go. This thing's tied up at 12. Kelly, big games all around the area tonight. We saw that big matchup in uh, cold water that uh, looks like Marion Local is going to run away with. And Columbus Grove really, really takes it to. Playing on tonight. all cylinders, aren't they? Yeah, they sure are. So we'll start the OHSA playoffs next week. Lots of teams in Stay Northwest tuned. Ohio. Yeah, lots of teams in the Lima Land area will be playing football and these if two teams yeah. if you really want to jump the gun about midnight tonight yeah. if you're up 
Joe Idle he does a great job well, we, updating yeah. everything. We won't be home till then, Gilly. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> this this one's going to last a long time. We're looking at overtime here unless the Gophers can put it in the end zone. Hey, 34 seconds. Anything's possible. The problem is they don't have any timeouts. Yeah, that's a huge, huge albatross around your neck there with no timeouts and 34 seconds. But that seconds. was a great call right there. You know, the, the run a little slant. What did he get, 15? It looked like it across the middle. You're right. Remember the touchdown where the tight end went across the middle. Oh, boy. Yeah, we <laughs> forgot about that one. So Connor Manns is in the gun. He's got three receivers to the left, two to the right. They'll go five wide, empty backfield. Yeah, they got the big fella out there on the far side. Manns looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He steps up in the pocket, and he's going to be taken down. And that's the last thing Ridgemont wanted, but a great job there. Good job with the penetration. Defense. Absolutely. They're going to have to spike the ball. And the clock goes down to 20 seconds. Porter and Spencer on the stop. And he spikes it with 15 seconds to go. 15 seconds left. Third down. So 15 seconds to go to bring up third and seven from the 42-yard line. Boy, you want, this has just been a, a, a battle all night, Gilly, of two defenses that have played outstanding. You know, Waynesfield in the second half has been outstanding. And every Took time it to Ridgemont. Yeah, Ridgemont, sure did, you know, Ridgemont right found a way. Yeah. yeah, and the officials have stopped play again. And they moved the ball up a yard. Not real sure what that was about. but Not, not quite sure either. Okay. So Connor Mann's in the gun. Third and seven from the 42. 15 seconds to go. You'd think they can get maybe two plays off here, Gil. Mann's looks now. He's throwing down the right side. And he's got a man out there. And he just about makes the connection. And he overshoots number 21, Colton Mann's. That'll bring up fourth down. Boy, and he was able to get inside the defender, he partner. He sure was. He sure was. You hear those sniffles, Gil? That's October weather, brother. Oh. <laughs> Gilly and I will be sitting in the bathtub can tomorrow we, trying to. Can yeah. we just skip November, December, January, yeah, February? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Here the Gophers on fourth down. Goes to the sideline, and that'll be a turnover on downs. And... Tigers will take over, and more likely they'll just take a knee, Gilly, and they'll play for overtime. No, not so fast. They Ooh. could take and throw this thing side to side and behind and over and under and through. Well, let's see what no they do. No tuba player in the end zone. Not going to be able to run over any band members. Okay, okay. Just a really good high school football game Absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Credit to both coaches and the players. And I mean, the fundamentals are, are pretty solid on both teams. Yeah, you're right. Especially on the defensive side of the ball. So Wayne will take here first and 10 from the 44. And, uh, they're just going to take a knee, and that's exactly what they'll do, and they'll play for overtime. We got overtime from Ridgemont High School. Yeah, we got a, a false, false start. start. A false start. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Trying to get a number here. Yeah, he wasn't set. It was one of the tailback running back positions. So they'll do yeah, it again. Yeah, he's set now. And he'll take the snap and he'll put it down. So we got overtime from Ridgemont High School. When we come back, we're going to play some overtime. We're watching high school football on WOSN. Uh, back here at Ridgemont High School. And Gilly is broadcasting from the car. 
uh, he checked out on us. We can we got him on a remote. He's got his heater on. You can you hear me, Gil? <laughs> Loud and clear. <laughs> I just kidding. Gilly's sitting right here with me. All right, Gilly. I couldn't do the, that to you. I could not do that to explain you. Explain the overtime rules here. Each team gets a crack at it from the 20. Ridgemont won the toss. They'll take over. If they don't score and Wayne Swift gets the ball back and they score, they win uh, and vice versa. Thank you for that explanation. There you go. You did it well. <laughs> so here come the Gophers. They'll get the first crack at it. Coming to side. Man's going to hand to Howard. Howard's going to roll to the 20, to the 15. He's got a seam. And, oh, my goodness. And I, now I can certifiably say that is a face mask. I am pretty sure what I saw was a face mask. And boy, that's going to put him up there. Well, if he doesn't get him. He scores. Yeah, he scores. He absolutely scores. You're right. He absolutely scores. I'm Every right. time Ridgemont has brought those two guys across, They've got big plays. Yeah, they have. They have. Mason Howard is a heck of a football player, Gilly. We, <laughs> I am just so impressed with him. I mean, when you bring uh, Mr. Eaton and stuck in motion and set them on the other side and overload it, oh, my goodness. That'll bring it first and goal from the six-yard line there in the thermal guard window and door uh, red zone. Connor Manns is in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Howard. Howard's going to take it towards the goal line, and he is driving, and a flag oh, comes in. Boy. And you wonder what that call is going to be about, and now we're just flag crazy right now. And let's see what they call here. Another face mask? Is that what they're going to call here? The official. I think it's going to be against Waynesfield. The official made the face mask gesture. Face mask against Waynesville Goshen. That'll move it half the distance of the goal line, Gil. It puts it right on the doorstep. Look at that clock, Gilly. Zeros on the clock. No sense in having one here in overtime. Correct to Mundo, yes, partner. Right. That's two huge face mask calls. So Manns will go under center. He's going to keep it himself. And, and a score. The Gophers take the lead right off the bat here in overtime. And they lead this one 18-12. And, and a flag comes in late. Let's see what they say here. And that's going to be uh, against unsportsmanlike unsportsman -like. against the Is Gophers. That, that was after the touchdown, That correct? was after yeah. the touchdown. After the touchdown. So the touchdown will stand. Which will go probably... I don't know if it goes on the extra point or if it will go when, because there's no kick. Right. I've never seen this part before. This is a learning part here for me. But it is an unsportsmanlike call. He's going over and asking. Talking to Coach, Coach Summers. Reddick, yeah. yeah. He, he, one's talking coaches. to Coach Summers, one's talking to Coach Reddick. We'll see what they do here. Could be offsetting penalties. So let's see what they call here. Ridgemont going to go for two here. A lot of downtime here. <laughs> As the officials trying to sort this one out. Did they? To my understanding, was I don't he? Know. Was I he? Don't uh, did he get thrown out of the game? No, I. To my knowledge, I don't think so. He's on the sideline. I'm talking about Landon Eaton is on the sideline, and he come off there upset. The touchdown was good, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, you got to believe it was good because it, it was, happened yeah. after the play. Yeah, Let's, you're right. Yeah, they've got it on the scoreboard. 
So here go the Gophers. They'll go for two here. Up 18-12. And they're going to pass the oh, ball. Nice the play ball. defensively. Yeah, the, you're right. They had him cutting in on a slant, and he just dropped the ball, and that'll make it 18 to 12. So Waynesville Goshen will get their chance if they can score a touchdown here in a two point conversion. No, Eaton is back in. Yeah, Eaton He's is back, back in. in. The game. Going to play his defensive end position. Yeah, I think that was more so just to uh, just to calm the young man cool down, him down yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I think you're right. Get his emotions in check. So and a good will... piece of coaching yeah. by Absolutely. the assistant coach, you Absolutely. know, over there talking to him. If we stop him, we win. So Waynesfield gets their shot from the 20-yard line. Waynesfield used to overtime. They played a three-overtime thriller with upper side of Alley earlier this year. So Kaufman will get the ball. He'll hand it back to Carson Barnes, and he's going to be taken down. Landon Eaton grabs hold of him, and he's going to lose yardage on that play, Gil. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They took him out. Assistant coach talked to him. Got his head back into what was going on. Great play right there by that young man. Yeah, he's played a great game tonight. You know, kudos to the assistant coach. And guess who else was down there too? Mr. Henderson. He was down. He was. He was down there with the assistant coach. Yeah. Communicating. Coffin's going to roll to the left. He's looking downfield. He throws, and it's picked off, and that's Ball it. game's over. Richmont wins it. Kaufman throws into the end zone. The game is over. The Gophers win this one 18 to 12. Gilly, you want to talk about a thriller here in Ridgemont. What a game. What a huge win. And you know, look, look over here on the sidelines. You know what? A couple of the players, one of the coaches going over, checking on Henderson. Xavier stuck with the interception right there. Great high school game, Danny. That is an yeah, this is as good a game as we've That's had all good. year, Gil. You know what? And, and, and you know, kudos to both teams. Absolutely. You know, great environment. Thank you to Ridgemont. You know, Ridgemont, you know, is gonna go into this playoff on a high note at eight and two. They sure Waynesfield. are. You know, this is a, a, another tough loss for them after, what, reeling off five in yeah, a row. they've had some tough losses But guess what? Both names are going to be called Sunday. Yep. You're right. Come man. playoff time. And I cannot wait to see. I'm going to try to cheat and look on Joe <laughs> Idle later tonight just to see where the matchups appear. But, uh, you know, good luck to both of these teams. And both well coached, played exceptionally hard, very physical game. You're absolutely but I, right. I'm going to go out on, you know, and tell you this. I think it was a very clean play game. Absolutely. And that will wrap it up from Ridgemont High School. The Golden Gophers defeat the Waynesville Goshen Tigers 18-12. to For Jacob O'Neill, Darren Gilbert, I'm Danny Holbrook saying we'll see you next week. You've been watching high school football on WOSN.